perfect. All right, so we're joined from Stillwater, Oklahoma, by uh, assistant professor at the Ferguson College of Agriculture there at Oklahoma State University, my friend, Dr. Courtney Jordan-Brown. Just so glad to have you with us today. Founder of AgSposure uh, as well, really pushing agriculture uh, education in urban areas and uh, expert on agriculture leadership uh, and, among other things, in the world of agriculture, really big advocate. So thank you so much. It's always a pleasure to have you with us. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I always enjoy these um, opportunities to get to connect with you and share a little bit of my story as well as how you all can consider getting involved in agriculture. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you all. Can you see my presentation? You see yep, it? I see it. Or do you see the whole screen? Now I see your oh, great background. Technical. Oh, you're fine. Do you see it? Now? Got it. <laughs> I do. Okay, perfect. Sorry about that. So, um, just as mentioned, I'm going to talk with you all about what you can do in agriculture and share a little bit about my background. But before we get started, there, I do want us to take a poll. So I'm going to drag this over here and let me know if you can't see it. Here. Yep, Can you all see it. that? Yep. Okay, perfect. So the first question I want to ask you is what comes to mind when you hear the word agriculture? So you can either scan the QR code, join by text, whichever is easiest. Yeah, go ahead, guys. What words come to mind? I know you all have talked a little bit about some stuff, so. They're walking up to the to the Promethean and doing it. Okay. Perfect. I get to see them. <laughs> okay. Necessary survival. I like these words already. All right, yeah, they're all getting in now. Okay, perfect, perfect. Yeah. Give you what comes to mind when you hear the word agriculture? Okay. Very good. Growing crops. Very good. Okay. Hard work. Thought pretty. I like that one. Pretty. I agree. Take okay. technology work. Farming, of course. Science. Very good. We should be in that STEAM group, although we're not. We should be included. Okay. Life. I really like these words that are coming up. Has everybody submitted? We got a couple more still getting theirs in. Okay. I'll give us some time for that. I want y'all to be engaged. Okay, outside. I like that one too. Yeah. Let me know when we get everybody. Math, that's a really good one. I'm glad someone connected the dots of math. That was one yeah. of the reasons why I kind of changed my path of agriculture in undergrad was because math was involved. Okay, till, yes. Uh, environment, till. that's a good one. 
Absolutely. All right, I You're think fine. everybody is in now. Okay, great. Work seems to be one of the most popular things, work. Okay, I can see that. Um, farming, crops, uh, growing, necessary, survival, environment, technology, absolutely. Um, math. And I like that word pretty that someone put there. I think agriculture is a beautiful thing. So I appreciate y'all participating in this and just seeing a little bit of some of those things that come to mind. So work and farming seem to be some of the big things that people agreed upon or hard or things. But what I want to do is try to share some different routes in agriculture that do include things that you have mentioned, but maybe some things you haven't necessarily considered. So I'm going to go back to this. and present over here. Give me one second, y'all. Okay, here we are, we're back. Okay, so we took our poll. So now I wanna tell you a little bit about me. So when I first heard the word agriculture, I definitely thought cows, um, that was pretty much it, maybe crops, but cows for sure. So um, I'm originally from Memphis, Tennessee, went to Austin P State University, and that's where I met your lovely instructor, um, but went there and I was in agriculture science, but initially because I was a pre-veterinarian medicine major. I loved animals, dogs and cats and that sort of thing, but at Austin P, in order to be the pre-vet track, it was recommended to me to study agriculture. So that was my first opportunity. Um, I didn't grow up in an area that had a lot of agriculture connected directly to me. There were crops and fields and things on the outskirts of Memphis where I was, but I wasn't engaged in those things. We didn't have an agricultural program at my high school or middle school or anything like that. So agriculture was very different for me. That was the first time I was really around cows. And um, as I said, I was in a pre-vet major, but then the math and the organic chemistries and the science started getting a little heavier than I wanted. So I said, this may not be the route for me, along with the, some other things that come with being a veterinarian. But because I was able to be around cows and get that experience, I thought they were really cute. And I said, I'll stick with this because I enjoyed animals. So that's why I stayed in agriculture. One of the only black students in my program that was strictly agriculture and not pre-vet. So it was a very different experience for me. A lot of my friends there didn't really understand what I was doing with agriculture. And to be honest, at that point, I didn't either. I just knew I liked the animals. So I thought I, I wasn't going to change my major at that point picked up communications, and I didn't really see the natural connection between agriculture and communications. Again, a lot of my friends at Austin P were involved in agriculture, so I didn't really get immersed in the culture of uh, agriculture field. So I was still kind of learning. I graduated, took a year off, ended up Googling, trying to figure out where I would go to grad school and to pursue my master's, and I found agricultural communications. Now, Austin P has some programming there with that, but I never knew about it. So I said, this will be a perfect fit for my major and my minor. And I enjoy public speaking. I still didn't really know what all went into agriculture until I moved to Oklahoma. And I was a little culture shocked. Um, I was in Stillwater. It wasn't the most diverse place compared to um, Memphis, but it gave me an opportunity to start to get to know people within agriculture. And it really, open my eyes to some different needs there, led me to my research, which I'll talk about in a little bit, but really wanting to understand why Black people weren't engaged in agriculture, but also learning that there was a significant population that is involved and in how I could support them. So I did that, and I'll share with you kind of the nonprofit I started based off of my research. Um, and then later on, um, went to pursue my PhD in agricultural education, with an emphasis in agricultural leadership. So again, I was a kid that grew up not really understanding what career opportunities were associated with agriculture, but I just kind of, you know, prayed and figured it out and ended up finding my way into this field and really finding a ton of opportunities I wanted to share with others, which is why doing stuff like this is really fun for me. 
So here is a little bit of a glimpse of what my career has looked like and where I am now. So um, as I mentioned, I went to OSU for grad school, did my master's, and that's when I really just sat down and said, you know, why aren't black people doing agriculture? Why aren't they studying it? Why aren't they pursuing careers in it? Why am I the only one black person in all my classes here at OSU? Just really trying to understand the dynamic there. And then in doing that, that's when one, I grew a passion to want to encourage more black communities to engage in agriculture, whether it's youth or just community members. Um, but then also understanding that there are some black farmers out there. And, and it's actually, it's a funny story in Mississippi, we were looking and it was well, it's not like a funny story, but it's funny how it ended up connecting me to my research was it was something on the news and um, my, my parents and I, we saw something happen. There was a fire down there. A family had a fire and it was a black family. And we saw that and we're like, man, we want to go down there and do something to help. We didn't have much, but we wanted to go down there and support them. And I don't remember what part of Mississippi it was, um, probably somewhere pretty close to Memphis. But when we went there, we were talking to the family and they were sharing with me that they loved agriculture, but they were having challenges in getting involved in agriculture due to lack of resources, lack of connections and equipment needs. And it just opened my eyes to that element that there are black people who actually do want to be in this industry, but there are some barriers there. So that's what really helped drive my research and my interest to say, not only do I want to encourage more black people to join the field, but I also want to support the ones who are either in it or want to join it and try to eradicate some of those barriers. So it's a nice full circle of how Mississippi has kind of come back in my life, but how it helped drive my uh, research when I was in the master's program. Um, so with that, did my research, ended up working at Langston University, which is our HBCU, only HBCU in uh, Oklahoma in our 1890 land grant and worked there. And that's when I got super immersed in the black community, agriculture and other minority communities, understanding um, what challenges they have and also how I could connect better with these groups and utilize agriculture in a solution type of way. So then I started my nonprofit, Ag Exposure, and that's where you see here, that was our first cohort of youth members there. And it was really just based off of my research is that if we wanna see more black kids in agriculture, we gotta ensure that the programming is available to them. So with that being said, I just said, I think I can do it better than FFA and 4-H, so I'm gonna create my own. And um, they're not in these communities as frequently as they need to be so I want to do that and I had a really great experience introducing these kids to agriculture some had an interest in it some did not but they thought growing would be cool so I did that and it was really rewarding to see the impact that just growing a plant had in their lives and the appreciation that they have for being involved. So I did that for a couple of years, ended up coming back for my PhD, but then with doing that, it was COVID and all of that happened with the shutdowns. So my organization went dormant while I was trying to continue pursuing my degree. But right now that I've kind of had a year under my belt that I've come back as a college professor at Oklahoma State University, continuing this line of research and um, I have what I, is a teaching appointment as well as an extension appointment and i'll talk a little bit about extension later but that's where i get the opportunity to just go in the community and serve and do things like this and try to advocate uh, for different groups in agriculture and with doing that i am looking to try to get my nonprofit back started and do some creative things with that so it's been really rewarding and agriculture has been pretty good to me um doesn't mean i haven't had challenges or experienced some things that make it hard to be present in the field um especially just as a minority there there's certainly some things that make it hard but i would say the good outweighs the bad and i see the value in it that i want to make sure that we have an equitable opportunity to have a space in this industry absolutely so a little glimpse yeah so a little bit of a glimpse into the research i do and why it's so important is that we see here 1.4% of farmers in America are African American. So to give you a number of that, it's about less than 50,000 farmers who are black in the United States. And just like other ethnicities, we see the age um, of farmers going up and they're in their 50s and 60s. So when we look at that, that's alarming because this number isn't really increasing 
in a significant way and the age wow. is going up. So if we don't do anything to really address that, then we could see some decline and maybe some extinction of black farmers. And when we look at the history of black people who contributed to the agriculture industry here in the United States. And yes, that includes slavery, but let's not miss the skill set that black people had in order to build an economy around agriculture. It's really important that we keep that that place here, if that's where we want to be. So it is hard work. And like I've told you about my career, I'm not out there farming. So that's not the element for me, but I want to advocate for the farmers that want to be there. So I'm not outside unless I get to do a tour, I get to go help some of my farmers friends and that's fine. But I know my skill set is not out there growing. I'm just trying to keep my house plants alive. <laughs> that's a struggle enough. <laughs> so the next part here is that we have fewer than 200 African-American agricultural education teachers. And I tried to do a little research, I should have just asked before, but y'all don't have an agriculture education program there, do you? We do not. Well, even though we do have two colleges that have uh, agriculture degrees, one's at HBCU, Alcorn State University. Mm -hmm, absolutely. So yeah, there isn't um, a lot of black ag ed teachers and I'm working, that was what my dissertation work was on, but I'm trying to understand if we wanna see more black people in ag, how do we start connecting black people to um, education, agricultural education? And it helps when you have some teachers there in those spaces. So there's less than 200, that's really not a huge number. And historically there was a lot more black teachers, um, but a lot of things that I can't share now because we don't have the time, it'll take all day, but a lot of things have have contributed to the small number. So I want to try to help change that as well as seeing what it looks like for more ag programs to be in predominantly black schools. Um, and then another piece is that African American land ownership, we own less than 4 million acres of land. And when we look historically after slavery in the early 1900s, we had significantly more, I think it was around 19 million acres of land. So when you wow. look at that, you see that we had way more land then after slavery. And now here in 2023, we have less than 4 million acres. It makes you wonder what is going on here. So I have a real big interest in the black wealth gap and how can we connect agriculture to trying to help um, lessen that gap and provide more equity for black communities. So that's a little bit of a glimpse into what my world looks like in my research. I teach agricultural leadership classes so I teach classes just about leadership theory and how to be a more effective leader and how to um, kind of avoid different situations that you wouldn't necessarily want to be involved in by understanding what leadership truly is, good leadership. Um, so that's the bulk of where I spend my time at teaching that class, teaching classes in that way here at Oklahoma State at the graduate and undergraduate level. So now what you really want to know about, and that's about me, but how can you really succeed in agriculture, careers and opportunities? It's a lot of information. So let's go. Why should you even pursue a career in agriculture? There's a global demand for food, um, not only in larger communities, but just or just smaller communities as well. There is a demand for food access, healthy food access. We have food insecurity. Oh. Can you hear me? Okay. I'm sorry, the office buzzed me. Go ahead. Okay, no problem. Um, we have food insecurity where we see different populations not having access, whether it's in rural communities or urban communities, not having access to healthy food. And what does that turn into? Nutritional deficits. That affects just your academic performance if you don't have access to healthy food. So it's really important um, that we not only have food available, but healthy food. So there's a global demand. There's a huge push to just say, oh, well, we're growing in people. So we need to grow um, and how food is produced. But it's also important that we look at food waste because we waste a lot of food. Think about your life. How much food do y'all throw away? Absolutely. You know, so we, yeah, we have to care not only about producing more food, but how do we be more responsible with the food we do create? Um, so that's really important. There's a ton of careers you can look into to support that career versatility. You'll see here in a couple of slides, there are a ton of careers you can choose in agriculture that fit your interests. I like to say, if you want to do anything, you almost can find a fit in the agriculture field to connect to it. So it's a lot of diversity there. Um, sustainability and agricultural literacy. 
So we want to know, obviously, y'all know that natural resources don't get recreated. So we need to be more responsible with our land, our soil health. That is so important to the quality of the food that can be created. If we're not taking care of it, someone put till on there, looking at no till, looking at regenerative agriculture, different ways we can be really um, treat the land in a very healthy, caring way. So the land can treat us well too and what it produces. So sustainability and technology, as you all touched on, technology is growing in significant ways to help with that. Agricultural we actually have literacy. a drone program. We have a drone program here uh, in Madison County Schools that they can do in 10th or 11th grade. And I know the drones are huge in agriculture right now when it comes to geospatial mapping. Absolutely. Drones have just really changed the game and what we can see and what we can access that we can't do on foot. Um, and it's just with one little machine or multiple machines. So certainly a ton of technology available that can help us be more sustainable in the agriculture field. Um, also, ag literacy, the kind of that question I started you off in the beginning with just thinking about what do you think about when you hear the word ag, agriculture? What does that mean to you? People don't always understand where their food comes from, just like I don't understand what it takes to make a computer work. It's no, it's no shame in not understanding agriculture in a deep level, but there is a huge push because everybody's got to eat. Ag is associated with food, clothes, um, fiber, all these different things, furniture, whatever you can think of and see and look around in the room, there is likely a tie to agriculture and how it was produced, whether it's from the trees that were grown to make the furniture or from the clothes on your back, whatever the case. So just educating the community and ensuring that they understand what agriculture means and how it can impact them is really a great career opportunity. Environmental stewardship, someone said environment earlier. So again, just thinking about how can we practice agriculture in a more environmentally friendly way and more, way more things that we can't talk about today. So these are some of the majors, huge, huge list. And this isn't even all of them. I underlined it, underlined the ones that are associated with me. So agricultural yeah. education and leadership and communications. That's where I found my niche and I'm on the social side of agriculture research. So when you look at agriculture, y'all talked about technology. You see a lot here with business management, food science, farm management, genetics, a lot of that science y'all were talking about, um, food industry, um, systems, entrepreneurship. I got to participate in that through my nonprofit, rural so sociology, looking at different rural communities and seeing how we can support them because a lot of our agricultural production is in rural spaces. So a lot of them, uh, rural spaces need support and economics or economically growth, economic growth. And a lot of people, me included to some extent, sometimes don't necessarily look at the rural communities to live in because I can live in a rural community, but I don't want to have to drive more than like 15 minutes to get to the city. So I, you know, I struggle with that. But rural communities are really important. I like the ruralness, but I just don't want to be too far away. I need best of both. Yeah. Worlds. And just looking at these majors, I can tell you right now, almost all of these are available in Mississippi, either at Alcorn State or Mississippi State or at both. And also at our community colleges that have agriculture programs as well. Absolutely. And a lot of my students, as you know, I mentioned, um, Professor, but I'm also an advisor. And a lot of my students, they go through those two year colleges and transfer straight into our program seamless, no problem. And they're able to continue their education. And when and how our university works, when you have your associate's degree, you don't even have to worry about gen eds or anything like that. You jump straight into yep. the major. So Absolutely. definitely look at all these things. I'm gonna talk a little bit about funding opportunities before we um, cut out here, but all of these majors and more great opportunities to look into how you can utilize your skill set to contribute to the agriculture industry because there's some jobs and, and security also, there. Yeah, and also some of these you can get an associate's in and start working in. So if you just wanted to do the community college route, Absolutely. there's a need for, and like and we were looking at uh, on on Wednesday, that with the growing technology and growing machinery, technicians and, and machinists are always going to be in demand for uh, in agriculture. And the, those aren't people that necessarily need degrees. They can learn on the job, do uh, the agricultural uh, agriculture technology. Um, a lot of the a lot of these community colleges will certify someone, and these large farms and agriculture companies are looking for skilled mechanics. Absolutely. In those career tech programs, you certainly can find a space in agriculture if college is not the route that you want to go. Um, a lot of like some people 
even go into welding and those sorts of things. We see some of that happen in ag programs at the high school level, but certainly you can find a fit in agriculture to like considering your interests. It doesn't always have to be the college route. Um, if you are thinking about the college route and maybe finances concerns you because college is expensive, it's really not accessible for everybody. Um, and don't get student loans because they don't go away. At least they, they say Absolutely. they don't go away from me. Uh, so I want to share. Right. I want to share with you to be proactive and trying to pursue opportunities to get your college paid for. And here's a few. The USDA 1890 Scholars Program for Historically Black Colleges. So Alcorn State absolutely is y'all's college for that. You can go to school, study in agriculture, science, computer science. You can look that up. But certainly agriculture majors, because um, the USDA, United States Department of Agriculture, um, any major you choose there, if you apply for this scholarship and you get it, they pay for all four colleges or four right. years of college for you. And then you get to have an internship, most likely at some U.S. Department of Agriculture office agency. It could be NRCS, FSA. It could be a lot of things. So many acronyms in agriculture. That's another thing. So you get an internship there in the summer. And a lot of students, after they graduate with this degree, they end up working for the USDA for a year or two. So it not only pays for your college, but it also supports you after to have a job um, in the government after graduating. So I've had a ton we of had an alumni. We had an, one of our alums use that same scholarship recently at Alcorn. Absolutely. It is amazing. I had so many students I interacted with when I worked at Langston because Langston is our 1890. So there are 19 1890 universities in the country. Most of them are predominantly in the South. So when you think about black migration and history kind of makes sense. But most 1890s are in the South and we have some going up to the Northeast and one in Ohio in Ohio up there. It's a newer one. Another thing is if you are looking at college and you're concerned about finances, contact the school department you're interested in. There's a lot of internal scholarships um, that don't necessarily get publicized that you could reach out to and learn about. Also, look up a professor. If there's a professor that has research interests you're into, reach out to them and then they can share some opportunities. And then also the diversity offices. So if you're looking at like a predominantly white institution or anything like that, there are a ton of scholarships. I was able to receive scholarships from Oklahoma State um, just you know because I was there studying in a field that many people weren't studying and I had the grades or whatever. So that's what you can also look into. And then here, these are some of those careers that you can just find your match in and see what makes the most sense for you. Um, I always like to think of like some interesting ones like cosmetics. I mean, if we look at some skincare products, herbs, oils, where do they come from? They come from plants. Um, or if we're looking at like goat milk lotion or anything like that, if you're into beauty and skincare, there's a connection to agriculture that you can be more educated on how to develop those products, um, along with a lot of the other ones. But I always find an interesting connection here on these slides with um, how you can find a fit. So another way to get involved now, so you don't have an ag education program, which is okay. I grew up and didn't have that. And look, I found my way in ag. So if there's no FFA program around you that you can get involved in, there are 4-H programs, likely somewhere around. That is through Extension, oh. where you see here, contact your local Extension office. Mississippi State University is y'all's. And then obviously Alcorn State, 1862 is a um, predominantly white institution for land grant, Mississippi State. And then Alcorn, we have the black one. They have Extension offices and they have personnel that are here in the community to serve you. And they likely have 4-H clubs. So if you want to get involved in the seat, there's a ton of different programs you can get involved in with 4-H. And it doesn't have to just be showing animals. It could be doing, um, um, speech competitions, um, archery. It can be a ton of things. Maybe yeah. start a gardening club or environmental club if you don't already have that. Manners, minorities in agriculture, natural resources, and related sciences. That's a huge national organization. They have some youth programming there. Um, lots of ways. Get with your community gardens, farmers markets, ag-related workshops through Extension. Look at that. And then just find your passion, your purpose, Take advantage of all the opportunities you have and be open to something new and seeing different connections there. So 
this is who I am. This is a flyer from one of the things I get to do with working with black producers. And I like to connect with them, but here's my contact information. Even if you are interested in college or OSU or whatever, but if you have any questions about agriculture, take my information down, my information down. Give me a call. My call might not be as good. Send me an email, but I can give you, I don't even mind giving you my cell, but I'll give that to you. <laughs> okay. So he can give that to you. <laughs> but yeah, I really am glad I got to chat with you all today. And I hope to hear from you. And I hope you think about agriculture as a career. That's awesome. Uh, now, before I get to the students' questions, I, I always want to mention, you know, you were a Division One athlete. Um, oh. So, you know, I have, we have a lot of, we have a lot of athletes in here with us, male and female. And a lot of them have the aspirations of playing college sports, whether it's on the NAI, JUCO, Division Two, Division One level. It's all the same as far as your time commitment, because you were a great student as well as being a Division One athlete at track and field. So how do you balance that academic and athletic side once you get to college? Because I, it's not like high school where you can show it when you want to, mispractice sometimes, you know, you're too tired to go to school the next day. You can't do all that in college. So uh, talk a little bit about that because I think uh, a lot of these kids don't understand the time commitments. Yeah, it, it, is, a, it is a challenge. You do have to – um, really learn to manage your time. And there were a lot of days where I would work out two to three times a day. I looked at um, my athletic scholarship, like that was my job, but I did also have other jobs. So I did have to try to balance that. I, I don't know. I think you find a major you're passionate about. So that helps with the setting. You're going there for sports. You want to excel, but you have to understand that they're both connected. So if you are not excelling in your grades the way you need to, you're not going to be able to play sports. You will be ineligible. So understanding that connection and finding the balance there. I had a planner and I always wrote my deadlines. I mean, that was back in the day. So now you got Google Calendar and whatever you use. So ensure that you are just staying on top of keeping alerts there for when assignments are due and getting involved with other students and sometimes y'all meet up some of my other athlete friends we would go and study together at the library we would incorporate it um into our daily lives because they became part of my family so you just got to find overlap and find balance where you can but there was a lot of all-nighters and a lot of things like that but that was just part of the grind but i wouldn't change it at all i had a really great college experience yeah and, and i'm glad i got to be a part of that um uh, yes. But it also that would also be, you know, even if they want to be in the band, you know, I drive by Jackson State all the time and that band practices at all hours of the night. So it really is once you get to college, you've got to learn to uh, to manage your time and balance your priorities because it is very because, you know, we had a guest one time said the reason people fail out of college isn't because they're not smart. It's because they can't manage. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So, I see it every day. Yeah. Great. So I think that, uh, that's a great message. But I do have uh, some questions from the students. and These are all ninth graders. Uh, this person is Samaya Williamson. She's one of our volleyball players here. Cool. And she asked, what was the hardest part about studying agriculture once you got into the program? Um, I think for me, like I mentioned, the sciences, I'm not going to lie, science and math is not my strong area. Um, so that quickly weeded me out of being a veterinarian. And, it, and I think it's designed that way to do it. So I would say the sciences, the organic chemistries and microbiology, um, that wasn't my thing. And, and I am okay with knowing that that isn't my strength. And I found different spaces to where communications was something I enjoyed and being around animals. And now I see a connection and communication and advocacy for agriculture in different ways made sense. So I didn't allow the challenge I saw in agriculture to deter me from it. I just found, like I told you, find your match. I just found a different space that was more suited to my skill set. Uh, this is uh, this is Trayvon Willis, one of our football players here, and he asked, "What was the main drive that made you pursue agriculture?" Yeah, I think initially it was just a love for animals, and then it turned into a love for people. And I think when I get to talk with farmers all the time, and I still love animals too, <laughs> I always enjoy that part. But when I get to talk to Anna or to farmers and hear their challenges, or I get to communicate with youth and see, like to share this could be a potential opportunity. I think just this is a way that I can serve people and serve my community and give back and hopefully add a little pillar towards larger change. That's awesome. Yeah, and and, and, I, and I agree. If somebody really has a love for animals, this really could be a great field because you really get to work with them every day. 
it really yeah. is a uh, you know whether it's horses or farm animals you know they're uh, even on the vet side we've had some students do the vet tech program which i've said is like a nurse for veterinarians they were able to do it in one or two years and now they work with animals every day and they love it absolutely yeah vet tech is always a great option too yeah all right uh this, uh, this is leah smith oh, excuse me this is leah smith another one of our volleyball players here uh and she I asked are there any, i play uh, that on the, the side now skills yeah, what would be the most necessary skills you would need to get into the agricultural field? Um, I think it really just depends on what area you want to go into. Like for me, I I mean, I think social skills is super important and I've developed a lot of soft skills through my education and learning. Um, so, I mean, I, I think just being willing to work hard and and learn different things, your ability, like your growth mindset, I think that's the biggest part. So if you're going into production ag, obviously you got to be able to stomach the smells of the farm and being around the animals and helping them. And when they're ill, like being a veterinarian, there are great things, but it's a lot of customer service that you have to deal with, um, along with just the challenge of just dealing with ill animals. Um, so I think it really is field specific. But for me, just being like a professor, like dealing with students a lot and their needs, um, even mental health, that's a huge one. I'm definitely not a therapist, but I find a lot of times that I want to support my students if they go are going through life challenges. So um, just people skills, even if you're on the farm, if you go to the managerial level, you got to be able to work with people and um, help them work with the animals. So. That's and I'm glad possible. you mentioned. I'm glad you mentioned that because I'm, you know, I don't care what career you go into. And these kids get so mad at us when we want them to do a presentation. It's not to be mean, but at the end of the day, no matter what field you're in, you got to be able to talk to people. Now, obviously, you and me can speak in front of large groups without any problem. But if you can't talk to one on one, somebody, uh, one on one with somebody, how are you going to sell them anything? How are you going to take their money? How are you going to tell them what's wrong with their farm? How are you going to tell them what's wrong with their animals? So I, mm -hmm. I agree 100 percent on that. Yeah. Hi, this is London Jackson, one of the members of our great band here at Velma Jackson High School. And she asked, what are your daily responsibilities as an agricultural professor? Oh, my God. It is so much. It's so much. I'm going through, like, trying to find balance. We talk about balance in college. It don't stop. Um, <laughs> it's a lot, I, I think, because I teach. So I teach uh, several classes. I have, like, five on my load right now, but it doesn't look like five full classes but so teaching so i do lesson planning um every week and then i go in for a lecture and i try to keep my classes as engaging as possible but then also i have to do research so it's not only just opportunities there for me to sit down and um, work with students but i have to do research scholar contribute to scholarly literature so that means going out collecting data and doing those things um, then I also do extensions, so I have to do things which I really enjoy this part is I have to go out into the community and work with people and um, bring programming to them through our land grant mission. So a day for me is varied, but a lot of my time when I'm in the office, people are coming in and out, students advising, helping them, making sure they're on track and visiting with them because I do really enjoy that. Um, so it is a very busy, busy job because I'm a tenure track professor so that is a little bit different than just being an instructor so there's a lot of metrics there that um measure my success so to speak so it is busy very busy that's awesome well i just got one more from the students and this is jordan job as another one of our football players here and he asked what is the most challenging part of agriculture oh that's a really good question oh man i feel like i should have been sent that one sooner um <laughs> to think about it I don't know. I think I'll frame it in my area of research because there's a lot of problems, but my, my area is, I think it's just a lot of challenges for black communities and, and black farmers in particular in agriculture. I think there's a lot of barriers and that number when we look at land loss, when we look at farmers um, that are present, um, and then all the challenges that disproportionately affect the black community when we look at food deserts, um, health, nutrition, again, wealth, that bothers me. And that's a huge problem for me. And I see agriculture needing to address it, especially when we look at um, like just slavery and a lot of the economic 
bandwidth that is associated with that and a lot of the wealth that was built off of that for individuals and companies and all these things. And when I see the disparities that black people have now today, when it's associated with wealth, I feel like agriculture should be thinking about how do we support that? Because that was a that's obviously a huge reason why we see a lot of the disparities that are present along with other things. So that's probably the problems that bother me the most. And a great person to get involved with here locally is our friend, Dr. Tar uh, Dr. Carla Turner Bailey here at Heinz Community College uh, at the uh, head of the ag department over there. So that's a great person here that can get these young people plugged in as well. Now we're, we're almost out of time and, uh, and I just always thank you so much for joining us. I, I learned something every time you're with us and it's just such a joy to still be connected after all these years. Um, but, but before we go, whether these kids want to get into ag or not, um, they still, you know, you grew up just like they did. You were a young black girl in the, in the Southern United States uh, with oh, yeah. similar, similar circumstances with the same obstacles. Um, and you were gotten to a field where there was, has always been a glass ceiling and you have been one of the few, but I always say just because you're the best, at, the first at something doesn't mean you can't be the best at. It. So what can you, what can these young people do now to start overcoming those barriers that they're going to face? Yeah, I think yeah. a big part of that is getting out of your comfort zone. And, and I say that to you and I'm speaking to myself. I'm the first and only black professor in my department. So it is a lot of getting out of my comfort zone, even for me here. So I think don't be discouraged if you don't see an example of someone in the career you want to be. Maybe you are going to have to be that first example for someone else. And with that comes some responsibility and some strain. I mean, I think I would be lying if I said there isn't a challenge with being um, some first in some spaces or even some seconds and thirds. But I just say, stay tied into your perfect purpose, whatever grounds you, your foundation for me is my faith. Stay grounded on that and understand you have a bigger purpose to serve. So the obstacles that are there don't allow them to deter you from being successful. You can still be successful. You just got to maybe have a little more strategy behind it. So I encourage you all to do that. You all can do it. You have a great teacher. So I have no worries about you at all. Um, uh, Mr. Pig has taught me so much just at Austin P. Hey, hey, time out, time out, time out, time out. How are you going to mis misspell my name? You've known me this long. Uh, oh my God. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Don't, don't judge me. I'm telling you I'm stressed. Okay. It's our first week of school. Okay. Our first week. <laughs> well, you got a good, you got a good reaction on that to the class. So I appreciate the comedy on that one. Oh, well, good. Well, my bad. Don't judge me, y'all. Don't judge me. Because I always called him by his first name. I always called him by his first name. I was like, I don't want to do that here in class. So sorry. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, no, any all jokes aside, I really enjoyed him. And he taught me so much. And he knows that. And I will forever think about referees and not teeing up or <laughs> needing to tee up people in a very significant way. So whether I said his name wrong today doesn't de like deter from the love I have for him. So y'all have a great teacher. Treat him well. He is doing amazing things with this program. Well, so are you. I appreciate it. Dr. Courtney. Brown, Jordan, Jordan Brown. Well, it's just Courtney Brown. Right so there. now we're talking about names. It's yeah. just Courtney Brown. <laughs> Courtney Brown out there, Stillwater, Oklahoma, Stillwater, Oklahoma, Ferguson College of Agriculture. It's always a pleasure. I miss you a ton. Okay, miss you too. Thank you. Good luck to you all. Thanks for having me. I see you, buddy. Bye.